Place yesterday, Feinstein made her final journey home to California on a military plane, accompanied by her dear friend and fellow California lawmaker. That friend joins us now, House Speaker Emerita Nancy Pelosi. Uh, Madam Speaker, thank you so much mm -hmm. uh, for joining us. Uh, I wa want to focus this interview on your fellow San Francisco Dem Democrat, uh, Senator Feinstein. But I do have to ask you, House Democrats are going to seek your advice regarding this news made moments ago on the show about this pending mo motion to vacate Kevin McCarthy's speakership. How will you vote? And what advice would you give your fellow Democrats on whether they can trust Kevin McCarthy if he makes Democrats an offer so he can stay in power? Mm -hmm. My advice to my fellow Democrats is simple. Follow the leader. Hakeem Jeffries has done a great job. Yesterday we had a victory in the continuing resolution. It was a victory for Democrats, a defeat for the MAGAs. And I would say this one thing, listening to your conversation, if that's a conversation, you're back and forth there. It's such a fraud when they start, the basis of this is about spending. These are people who gave a tax cut to the richest people in America to the cost of $2 trillion to our national debt when what's-his-name was president of the United States. $2 trillion to the national debt. And that was to give 83% of the benefits to the top 1%. They're on the prowl for Medicare, Medicaid. They, they, in their bill, they would cut a huge amount, almost a third of the administration of Social Security to help meet the needs of, of uh, beneficiaries who have questions and the rest. So they are, uh, and, and huge cuts in nutrition for WIC, m women, infant, and children. It's, it's not about the budget. It's about a values debate. And you're wasting your time on that guy because he has no sway in, this, in the House of Representatives, except to get on TV and to, uh, to raise money on the, uh, the Internet. But anyway, forgetting that, so I'm talking th about a yeah. serious legislator Let's talk here. about to that. To my let's, advice, follow the leader. Let's talk, okay, let's talk about her, because yesterday you accompanied Senator Dianne Feinstein on her final journey home to San Francisco yeah. aboard the military plane. It must have been a, a difficult journey. What was going through your mind during the flight? Yeah. Well, I was with her daughter, and see, it, it, with Diane, it's obviously official, it's political, and it's very personal. This is a, a woman who she left on her own terms. You saw how she answered Larry Craig, but she did that any number of times when colleagues or others tried to minimize her standing on an issue. She and I were not always on the same place on the spectrum of politics, but we all cared about our country. And she, again, reached across the aisle all the time, would negotiate with anyone for our great state of California, brought home the bacon, respected our natural resources, the, the, the forest, the deserts, the ocean, the lakes, the, and, and the beautiful diversity of our people. She was an icon. She almost gives, uh, is more than an icon because that's become a, almost a cliche. She was, came into office under such off, uh, to the mayorship, uh, such awful circumstances, and she unified the city. She gave comfort, and then see, right then we go into HIV AIDS. So uh, whether it's LGBTQ, women's rights, whatever it is, she has been a thoughtful, constructive, effective, productive leader and a nation, of national status. But still, for me, I can hardly talk about her without, um, because she's my neighbor, my friend, my family loves her uh, personally, politically, in every way. We used to always say, if, Na if Diane and, Aunt and I ran against each other, my daughter Nancy would probably vote for Diane. <laughs> that was the love that existed. But love is a good word for her because she loved people. She loved California. She loved America. And uh, to bring her home in the grand way that we did, thank you, President, Biden draped in the flag. She was such a patriot. Be welcomed by men and women in uniform as she, as she came off the plane. Uh, her daughter Catherine and granddaughter Eileen and son-in-law were, were there uh, to welcome her personally. But officially, the city welcomed her. And of course, everyone personally did as well. We heard so many um, wonderful stories, personal stories. Senator Gillibrand has this very moving story about how 
um, Senator Feinstein was, was just a very personal mentor to her, uh, took taking her under her wing when she arrived in the Senate, and then creating this very giant memo about how to be a senator that she really took time to, 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 to make. <laughs> Um, is there any per any personal story that you that you think back on when you think of her um, and and your relationship with her? Oh, so many, uh, so many. But as I say, in that case, it's personal neighbors and as then uh, political and and official. But I I um I do think one story, it's not about me, it's more about my daughter, Christine, and that is, Christine was chair of the Women's Caucus of the California Democratic Party, which is my political home, and it, there are probably 2,000, what, 1,500 women in the Women's Caucus. And Diane came when she was passing legislation, she was writing legislation to protect young amateurs. The young athletes, the gymnasts and all came to her. She listened to them. She respected them. She wrote legislation. And why I bring up the Women's Caucus is she went to the Women's Caucus to talk about creating this, writing this bill, listening to these young girls who had been sexually abused or harassed and the rest. And she told them that this was about the safety of these girls. It was about the freedom of these girls to be who they wanted to be. And it was about the choice of, of them to, again, be the master mistresses of their fate in terms of their reproductive freedom. But the point was it was a master class because she showed them freedom, safety, choice. It's all connected. It's all connected. It was a master class. Now, the, the Women's Caucus of the California Democratic Party is not the most moderate group. <laughs> it's more my, right. my uh, uh, shall we say, uh, place on the spectrum. And they still quote Diane. And Christine was very proud of that because um, she taught. She respected views. She taught. She always felt a responsibility to mentor. This is a, a national figure, a stateswoman, yeah. someone uh, so, and I could tell many personal stories, but they don't have as much application to o other people. I will tell one more. When we were moving for the Democratic Convention in San Francisco, I was chair of the California Democratic Party. We were trying to get the convention in San Francisco. So we went to see her. Willie Brown, Walter Shorenstein, and I went to see Diane to say, what, what about this? And she said, well, will it cost money? And we said, well, we have to raise money. And she said, well, my first concern are the people at Laguna Honda Hospital in San Francisco. This is where many lower income people, not all over, but lower income people who need medical care and all go in San Francisco, hundreds of them go in San Francisco. So she was always about people and meeting her, their needs with her responsibility. I could go on and on about some of those that people might not think of her as my first responsibility is to the poorest of the poor and, and under my responsibility in my city. Uh, the, uh, again, another time we'll have some more stories about her. Everybody's talking about the great legislation, and she was a great legislator. The gun violence, she saved lives. She saved people's lives. That was, it was passed. Imagine, she was in Congress yeah. one year. She came 93. In 94, she passed the assault weapon ban. And then it was reinstated, and then it went away. But while it was there, it saved lives. How many people can make that claim? Yeah. Uh, Madam Speaker, thank you so much. And uh, condolences to you uh, and to Senator Dianne Feinstein's uh, loved ones and friends. Uh, thank you so well, much. Let me just say that some of the senators some of the senators said that maybe her departure and the sadness that went with us focused people more on let's get the job done to keep government open for the people. Well, may her memory be a blessing. Thanks for joining us today. Appreciate it.